Hello and welcome. Transforming societies through using technology. One of the more interesting examples in India is the Unique Identification Authority of India and the Aadhaar platform as it's called. But how can technology fundamentally transform people's lives, particularly uh, the many hundreds of millions of poor people in India? Joining me to discuss that is Nandan Nelikani, Chairman of the Unique Identification Authority of India and also Infosys co-founder, former. Uh, Nandan, thank you very much for uh, joining us. So, you know, we've had many conversations about Aadhaar and, uh, and, and that's going at uh, good steam. You've got more than 300 million people enrolled. You're re on your way to 600 million. Uh, and you've demonstrated uh, what technology can do in one aspect, which is building an identity platform. I just wanted to get your thoughts on what are the new other things that it can do to change our lives, make it more efficient, remove corruption, and so on. Well, you know, uh, as I've been saying earlier too, the uh, current state of technology, the combination of large clouds with limitless capacity, ubiquitous connectivity, including broadband, and then the arrival of very user-friendly devices like smartphones and tablets, which have touch screens and voice interfaces and all that, have fundamentally created a whole new way of uh, leveraging technology for public purposes. And uh, we see that uh, that's a way to leapfrog in many ways. For example, if everybody has an ID, if everybody has a bank account, everybody has a mobile connection, then they actually have instruments with which they can transact, they can get the benefits, they can travel. Uh, and then on top of that, you can build other applications. For example, healthcare is an example. You could build a, a application on the cloud where your health record is portable. So you go from different hospital to different hospital or you commute, your health record travels with you. Or education, you could, you know, if you're doing a massive skills upgradation program, then you can, uh, you know, provide that remotely on the cloud. You know, take the exam on the cloud, get the certificate. So you know, the whole paradigm of public service delivery uh, for people like education, healthcare, skills, uh, financial services, all that can be done very differently. So I think this has huge uh, potential. Okay. So I'll put two questions to you. The first is, how how is it? Can it be? Uh, not, maybe frightening is not the right word, but can uh, the the citizen or the resident or the consumer uh, be worried that you know how do I access this device? I mean, you know, what if I'm not literate, or even even if I'm literate, I'm not able to understand this. Sure. No, well, I think that's uh, to my mind that's an overblown uh, worry because let's take mobile phones, and you know, I think the great thing done by the Indian mobile industry was has been to put a mobile in everybody's hand. We have 900 million mobiles. Now, how does it work? These people are essentially all prepaid customers. You know, 99% of customers in India are prepaid. And what they do is they walk into an outlet, and there are millions of outlets across the country. They give a certain amount of money to the shopkeeper, maybe five rupees, 10 rupees. And in exchange for giving physical cash, they get a digital cash in the mobile phone called talk time, and they go home. They've got it. You can say, how did they understand this talk time, digital time? They figured it out. So I think if, once you create a value proposition which is compelling, people will definitely adopt it. I'm not worried about that. If you have to make it simple, you know, a good user experience, but people get it. Right. So now on the other side, now what are the services that can be delivered differently, or so anything that you know? I mean, judiciary, for instance. I mean, you know, you talked about healthcare, but there are so many other areas where you know there are bottlenecks, and it, can technology solve? Yeah, I'm obviously, you know, let's take the judicial system. Now, obviously, you need courts, you need judges, you need laws, you need lawyers. You know, that doesn't go away. But if you are to create a platform where the judicial cases are managed on the cloud, uh, then you have a way of, you know, for example, when a case moves from judge A to judge B, you can take all the stuff. Otherwise, it doesn't have to start all over again. Or you can do better scheduling. Or you can conduct some cases remotely. Uh, or you can use analytics, for example, you analyze all the cases and find out where are the delays, or if you find, for example, that 40% of the cases are related to check bouncing, then you say, okay, maybe there's a way to better frame the law. So you can get a feedback loop of learning from data to improve things. And that itself will have a huge impact on many areas, including uh, reducing judicial uh, pendency. Right. So data itself is uh, obviously a big challenge, opportunity, and task. Uh, what, what can we do there as a, as a country? What are the areas that, you know, the, the low-hanging fruit? No, are? I think the way to think about it is that data must be captured at the point of the transaction and must be immediately analyzed. That's how it's meaningful, right? There's no point having a survey five years after the event because that's not going to help you. So you have to go to this concept of a real-time uh, data analytics. For example, let's say that you're rolling out a program uh, of women and child development. You know, we have this ICDS program. 
fundamentally it's about children and their height their weight maybe some you know some attributes iron levels all that you can now you can build a platform to do that and therefore when a child comes in for a checkup you can instantly capture that data and then you can analyze it so you know i think we have to think of it as a real time instant data collection and analysis way of thinking about it so everything can now be done because the sensor you know today you have what's called the internet of things so your phone has a sensor your shoe has a sensor your watch has a sensor so you can now get into that kind of uh, model for healthcare or for uh, health records all kinds of things so you know you've talked about some of the aadhar applications i mean there's in, within banking and uh, uh, subsidy uh, distribution and so on what are the new things that you're thinking of well you know right now our focus is is using it to deliver electronic benefit transfer which is both entitlements like scholarships pensions and narega wages as well as subsidies like energy and so on uh that's the big big sort of push because it's important for us to demonstrate a use a use case otherwise it's all theory right so we want to demonstrate the use case then we're looking at mobile for example uh, the mobile industry has a lot of kyc issues and they get fined if they they give mobile phones to the wrong people they now can use aadhar as a kyc and issue mobile connections uh insurance companies are looking at using aadhar as a kyc to sell insurance products uh so there are lots and lots of uh, apps that railways are looking at it the railway minister announced in his budget speech uh, and uh, he they are looking at how they can provide services uh, on the cloud which allows people to get a railway ticket in a more convenient manner using aadhar so all kinds of uh, thinking is going on out there on how this can be used right nandan thank you so much for speaking with us thanks go thank you